I'm going to try to answer the question that I've been asked the most, which is, what's the best classifier out there? And this is a very hot question. There are lots of scientific papers trying to answer this question. Here you have one paper in which specifically compare random forest versus logistic regression, or random forest versus logistic regression for binary classification. And the answer is kind of fuzzy. So if you compare here accuracy for logistic regression versus random forest, you can see that the error bars are more or less the same. So basically here they're comparing different data sets and with changing number of variables and you can see that you cannot tell that which one is the better so and actually i would say that even in in this situation logistic regression outperforms random forest in many situations more research in this case from spain and brazil and this is top of the art neural networks and support vector machines with fancy kernels and in the end they com they compare this for different data sets and the conclusion is very fuzzy again so the best classifier here reaches an accuracy of 80, I would say 81% and the worst 77%. So 4% point is not so hard, not, not so different. So I would say that no one is better than the other, or actually it's very context specific. In this paper, for instance, they conclude the opposite. So they say that random forest outperforms support vector machine and neural network. So what's the conclusion here? So basically this means that for some problems you can distinguish which one is the best, but from some other problems you cannot tell overall. So what's the best classifier out there? This is a, you know, like very precise way to ask this very more specific question that is, can we expect any classification method to be superior overall if we have no prior information about the problem at hand? And the answer is, that, as economists would say, no, there is no free lunch. So basically, you don't have uh, a Swiss army knife that is going to solve you all the problems. So the main message of this video is that there is no context, it's dependent reasons to favor one algorithm over the other. So, so what can we do? So let me give you a couple of ideas. Idea number one is know the facts. So in this table, I have summarized different criterion including the shape of the boundary between one class and the other, the, mm, the flexibility of the model in order to give you not just classification, but also probabilities. Is the model, if the model is giving information about feature importance or not, if it's evolving, meaning that if you include new information, the, the algorithm is going to adapt or not, is something that you have to run, you have to train, and then you have to use. So take a look at this table. I'm not going to discuss it uh, thoroughly, but you should print this and in order to have this at hand. So let me give you an example. So imagine that you're trying to classify this data set that we've used in another video. And basically you can see here that the boundary is absolutely non-linear. So you have these red points here and the blue points surrounding ki kind of this the red part. So basically logistic regression is not going to work. So basically I wouldn't use that. But I say here, no, out of the box, meaning that you can add some predictors, like we could include this variable a square, and then maybe logistic regression is going to provide a good answer. What about decision trees? In this case, I would say, okay, you don't have so many boxes here, meaning that probably this is going to be a good classifier with high interpretability. So take a look at this table and try to decide for your problem which is the best solution. Idea number two. I think the best choice is take your data set and create your own benchmark. So let me illustrate you how to do this. So you can download this code from, from this address in my GitHub account. So basically I'm going to use caret for feeding and ML eval and machine learning eval to evaluate the, the performance of different methods. So I'm going to use a data, a famous data set called Sonar, and I'm going to fix the seed in order the, to, to help you replicate my results. So Basically, I'm going to use cross-validation uh, and I'm going to include just a couple of summary functions are going to be accuracy and rock curve, uh, sorry, and kappa, and I'm going to store the probabilities when available and predictions when available. Okay, so here I'll show you five trains. In, in this code, I have eight trains in, in total. So the first one is going to be a uh, decision tree, K and N with 20 different values, random forest, uh, support vector machines with a radial kernel and linear regression with binomial family, meaning logistic regression. Okay, so you can run all of them and then I'm going to plug all of them into a list and I'm going to call this function evalm, which comes from this library. And here's what you find. So basically here you show, here I show the rock curve. So true positive rate versus false positive rate. And as you can see here, you have a couple of bad choices like the red and the orange. 
corresponding to decision trees in this case and to logistic regression. And the other one, okay, accuracy is not bad. The best ones here are random forest and uh, support uh, super vector machines with radial kernel. So far so good. So do we have any other criterion? Okay, you can use resamples from the carrot library and you can plot it with dot plot. And as you can see here, okay, radial, SVM and random forest are the best. They have the highest specificity, the highest sensitivity and also the highest area under the curve. Okay, so you have a couple of ways in which you can plot this. I like this one because you have different metrics. I have this one because you can have a good visual grasp of what's going on here, okay? Another way in which you can compare models is more qualitative. Instead of using these metrics like accuracy, sensitivity, or, or the area under the curve, you can use simply your eyes. And I'm going to use ggplot here in order to compare. So let's go back to our data set. We have the reds and the blues, and we want to classify them according to different methods. So here I've tried Key nearest, k, k, k nearest neighbors with 45 nearest neighbors, KNN with 5, random forest with 100 trees, decision trees, random forest with 500 trees, random forest with 1000 trees, logistic regressions with a quadratic predictor, uh, KNN with 200 nearest neighbors, and logistic regressions out of the box. Okay? And as you can see here, except these two, which are actually not, not so well, not so good, accuracy and cap are almost the same for all the models. And what does it mean? So it means that I wouldn't say that KNN45 is the best. Okay, actually it's the best in, in these two, uh, according to this criteria, but not so much. Actually, the, the error bar that arises from cross-validation is telling me that you have a lot of overlap here. What about the other metric? Okay, you can see that the, the area under the curve is almost the same for all the models. So basically the purple and the gray are not so good. Uh, so we, we can drop th those, but accuracy is pretty high in, 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 in the rest of the cases. So the area under the curve is pretty high in all of the cases. So which one is best? Okay, this is where your eyes are better than any criterion. So as you can see here, the best one in principle is KNN with 45 nearest neighbors. And this is logistic regression with a quadratic predictor. And to me, if I see this curves, uh, this, this couple of curves here, I have the quantitative information and here the qualitative information, I would take this one. And why is that? Because there is no way in which you can understand KNN, so there is no way in which you can explain anybody the results of KNN, but this is really simple to understand. If you go back to my video on supportive vector machi machines, remember that sometimes transforming like the concentration of a drug, taking the drug square, is going to give you a good separation. And here's more or less what is happening with logistic regression. Imagine that this is the concentration of a drug, and basically what I'm saying here is that mm, you can classify your patients pretty well using this variable, which is, okay, let's call this, I don't know, mm, oxygen in, in blood, blood oxygen concentration, and here the concentration of the drug given to the patient, okay? You can explain t this to a doctor, you cannot do anything with that. So again, your eyes are better than any quantitative criterion, okay? And I, if you take a look at the data, actually I like the logistic regression here even more, because as you can see here, KNN is kind of overfitting this part. So he realizes that you don't have any information here, so he's dropping the line around this point. But I would say that, I don't know, the if I have more data, I could have more greens here than I have now. So I, I, I would prefer this boundary, this parabolic boundary, rather than this sharp boundary here. You can compare all the models here, and you can do this with this code again. And as you can see, KNN with low K is uh, absolutely crap, so it's too noisy. Random forest, despite mm, it's very fancy and you have a lot of Kaggle competitions in which people are trying random forest, you can see that random forest is very dangerous. So you have these islands here that are completely meaningless. And again, linear log logistic regression is not so good, but with some tweaks, I think it's pretty good. So taking a look at this, I would say, According to accuracy, kappa, and area under the curve, I would say KNN, CART, I mean in decision trees and quadratic logistic regression. According to simplicity, I would take decision trees and quadratic logistic regression. So I hope that with these comparisons, I have answered the question that what's the best classifier out there? The answer is there is no best classifier, so you have to try wherever you can with your data using different approaches, quantitative approaches, qualitative approaches, a lot of visualization, and try to make your mind by yourself.